Allison here on this 30th day of August, 2024, with the latest journal entry. Some of my viewers may take note that I'm not posting as often as I used to. If you take on a project such as clarifying a subject like Trum well enough that the average adult can now understand and easily perform levels 1 through 3, and an even more ambitious one can continue on to Trum levels 4 and 5, it takes an insane amount of effort and drive to do so. Reviving a dead subject is no easy matter. So, for nearly two years I tirelessly studied, wrote, and produced these videos, and a few weeks ago I reached a point where I was satisfied to know that Trom is now available to the masses, and has a much brighter future than it did prior to November 2022. While in the YouTube universe having a little over 200 subscribers is nothing to really brag about, when you compare this to the fact that the Trom Forum has been around for 10 years and has 84 members, anyone would agree this is a vast improvement in the status of Trom as far as the spirituality and self-help type of content is concerned. While other YouTubers are getting hundreds of thousands of viewers with videos on how to play video games better, make more money, and dancing around in transparent lingerie, it's pretty evident that not everyone wakes up in the morning saying, you know, Today I'm going to find out how to resolve my mind and spirit, and I think it would be best done by studying the works of an ex-Scientologist who found a way to do it without having to be involved with the church. No, that's not the way our world is spun. So it's not only a great effort to explain Trom to others, but it's also a great effort to get them interested in it in the first place. An effort that if carried on too long, can really burn one out. And that's where I was about a month ago, having completed the main objective of my activity. Burnt out. I almost would have called it done if it weren't for my getting terribly bored after the first couple of weeks of letting go of the task. The novelty of newfound free time wears off quickly. I started to fill the void by restudying some of my old Scientology books. And after a while of doing so, it became painfully obvious to me I still have so much more I can cover on this channel. I've made the mistake of being overly concerned with the controversy surrounding the Church of Scientology. I'm not saying that the Church doesn't deserve the criticism. They most certainly do, and I'm actually soft on them compared to others. What I am saying is, that I've been concerned that if I continue to cover the subject of Scientology, some of you aren't going to like it because you don't like the Church. Well, I don't like the Church either. They take a wonderful, useful body of data and use it to forward their agenda of enforcing L. Ron Hubbard's policies and special brand of what he calls ethics on the rest of the world. Well, to that I say, the church needs to clean their own house before they even remotely consider they have the right to clean anyone else's. So where does that leave me and thee? Should I withhold this valuable subject from my viewers for fear I'm going to lose some of them? Decisions made out of fear are usually bad ones. And during the course of this last month or so of taking a break from the channel, I've gotten over that fear. Therefore, I'm going to be covering the subject of Scientology more thoroughly. I've handled my own concerns about this in my own conscience. But I also realize I need to handle yours too if I'm going to go further down this path. I'm going to assume, for the sake of argument, that those listening to this right now, not everyone, but a great many of you, don't want to have anything to do with Scientology. You don't want to be a member of the church. You don't want to be labeled a Scientologist. Or maybe you are a Scientologist, and you don't want to be considered a squirrel. I don't blame you if you fit into any of those categories. At one time in my life or another, I've had each of those attitudes I've just described, and many shades in between. The reality is, if you are going to seek truth, and if you are going to rise above your mental and spiritual condition, and if you are going to attain your desired level of spiritual freedom, you need to get over all of it, because neither of these attitudes, whether it's that you don't want to study Scientology because you don't like the church, or you don't want to study Trump because you are worried about what the church will think about you or what they will do to you, neither one of these attitudes is going to serve your purpose in the least. It's all a matter of resolving your identity. You're a Scientologist, which means you're not allowed to study Trom. You're a non-Scientologist or anti-Scientologist who has an interest in Trom, but you have reservations about it because Trom has roots in Scientology. 
You are a traumer and you practice it to spite the church, so you resolve you are only going to study what Dennis wrote and not what Ron wrote. I get it. I've been there. Done that. Felt that. Let's suppose you are an atheist. One day, out of curiosity you start reading the Bible. You read, Thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not commit adultery, and you think to yourself, you know, whoever wrote this is right. It's not a good idea to kill people or cheat on your spouse. It would be a better world if no one did those things. Does this now mean you are a Christian? Does this now mean you have to forsake your atheistic convictions? No. It doesn't. But a Christian might mistake you as another Christian if they saw you reading the Bible. For the general public, one considers that another is a Scientologist if they are a member of the Church. The Church of Scientology will say that you are a Scientologist if you study Scientology and use it to improve your life, whether you are a member of the Church officially or not. I think that the Church uses this as an excuse to exaggerate the number of Scientologists there are on the planet. They'll say that there are millions of Scientologists, and I think they are right but only to the degree that buying a book on Scientology and reading a few pages of it makes one a Scientologist. Yet one of the many contradictions of church thinking is that if you start offering Scientology services to the public but you aren't doing this with the blessing of the church, they'll label you a squirrel and harass you until you stop. That's what they did to Marty Rathbun, a Scientology executive who escaped a church holding facility and started his own Scientology practice from his home. So, while the general public's definition of a Scientologist may not be completely accurate, at least it makes sense and there are no contradictions in it. The Church's definition is, you are a Scientologist if you practice Scientology in any way, but if you start charging money for it and don't give us a cut, then you aren't a Scientologist, you are a squirrel. The Church will never phrase it quite like that, but that's what it boils down to, and it's a nutty, self-serving attitude to say the least. And it reveals what they truly care about, in that it's not so much important that people practice Scientology, but that they practice it in such a way that benefits the Church. Independent Scientology doesn't make the Church proper any money or strengthen their influence in any way. Life is a game. Past trauma affects the mind. It helps your study if you look up words you don't understand in the dictionary. These are all truths whether I discovered them, you discover them, L. Ron Hubbard discovers them, or Adolf Hitler discovers them. Jesus could come down from heaven and tell you that you don't need to look up words in the dictionary when you study and it would still be bad advice. Don't concern yourself with the identity of the person you obtain your knowledge from. Don't concern yourself with your identity or mine. I don't even reveal my own name on this channel not just because I don't want flack from the church over promoting Trom, but also because I don't want Trom to be all about me. It's not even about Dennis Stevens. Knowledge is knowledge. Who I am, who you are, and who discovered the knowledge is incidental. It doesn't matter. And if you can't understand this, and you equate what you study with who you are and worry about what others may think of it, it's going to do nothing but hinder your progress towards greater levels of awareness and spiritual freedom. You can study Scientology and even use it without having to identify as a Scientologist or even consider yourself one. And you need not ever concern yourself with what the anti-Scientology YouTubers and bloggers say, what the church says, or even what I may think of you. It does not matter. I'm Alison Tandry. We are DIY salvation. Don't just use your mind. Resolve it.